Thank you, Chair Ferraris Copeland and Chair Drum uh, for leading this and for your support on uh, so many of the things we've been working for from school seats to lead to accessibility. I want to just start by saying you've got a great team at SCA. I probably know more than most because they're on the phone with my office uh, <laughs> every other week. Uh, so uh, I would like to touch on school seats, sure. uh, lead, and accessibility. Uh, at the preliminary budget, hearing uh, Chancellor Freeney agreed that the Upper East Side needs more school seats. Following the hearing, we learned that we had 904-year-olds apply for less than 600 seats on the Upper East Side. We had a rally for school seats with Controller Stringer, Public Advocate James, Borough President Brewer, Senator Kruger, Assemblymember Seawright and Court, Councilmember Grodnick, parents and children. Following the hearing uh, and the rally, the mayor announced uh, 3K for all, which means we've now doubled the need for seats on the Upper East Side. And at the executive budget briefing, the mayor agreed to my request to begin negotiating with all new large construction projects on the Upper East Side to include new school seats. That all having happened, what progress has SCA made towards building or opening new school seats on the Upper East Side? Thank you for the question, Council Member, because I've been anxious to let you know that um, over the last couple of days, we've come to terms with, uh, on two projects in, in the Upper East Side, one of them in Council Member Garodnik's area, as well as one large one in uh, your area for pre-K. And we're very excited about it, and we're happy to meet with you and give you the particulars on it. It's quite a large project. That is uh, great news. I guess the, the overall concern is thank you for the, the good news. I'm ecstatic. Uh, you can hear it in my voice. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not more emotional about it, but I'm <laughs> very excited about it. Uh, and I think it's just great work, and if we can keep on going, is there a commitment to keep finding yep. more space? Yep, we actually have two other sites in consideration right now. That is fantastic news, and uh, I will continue to be your cheerleader on that. Uh, and then I guess I want to turn to, to Led. Uh, I've asked questions about this before. It seemed like uh, some of the situations were under control, but on April 28th, uh, the New York Times reported on, quote, most New York City schools had high lead levels, retests fined. Uh, it goes on to say that in the first measuring, only 1% measured it. But then they found that uh, somebody had apparently contacted the Times to indicate that there had been a flushing for two hours, which is, is a concern to me, especially since some of my schools were indicated in prior reports. And now, uh, as of the, at least as of the Times, is saying that 8% of outlets had levels exceeding 15 parts per billion, and a vast majority of school buildings, 83%, had at least one outlet with a lead level above the threshold. So. Um, Folks are starting to get a little bit concerned, particularly with this Times article. I'm also concerned about uh, the uh, why you chose to do the two hours and how we can be sure of future tests. So, and, and just making sure Roosevelt Island and all the schools in my district are and throughout the city are on track to not have this problem. So, lot, lots of different things to address there. Um, well, First and foremost, 92% of our fixtures tested below guidance. So we know that this is not a systemic issue. This is not about our water. This is not about our schools are not safe. 8% tested above guidance. That, by the way, compares very favorably with the rest of the state. We are all required to report the state. Statewide, the average is 14% of fixtures tested above guidance. Um, Any time, you know, we know that in those 8% that families get concerned, let's remember that the average school has over 100 fixtures. So again, if, it lets, if you just make the math easy, let's say it's 100. 92 of the fixtures are completely safe. Eight of them had elevated levels. If it was a drinking fountain or a sink used for cooking water, we will have shut them off so that no student can drink from them until it's remediated. And again, there's still 92 fixtures in that school building. Uh, and that how often are, are we going to be, how often will we be testing and retesting since we obviously had a change between tests? So we, we, the state requirement is that we test every five years. Every um, and five we, we are remediating the fixtures from this last round of testing over the course of the summer and into the fall. Would you be open to doing it more frequently than every five years and perhaps twice e each semester? So um, I'd say th that we can have a conversation outside of this uh, testing. 
Um, what we've learned from the testing is several fold. One is that it is individual fixtures. This is not a system-wide issue and that our remediation is effective. We do test every fixture that we remediate so that we know that that fixture is below guidance before it comes back online. So in effect, any fixture that has been tested above guidance has been remediated and retested to be below guidance. So that should address some of your concerns around frequency. So the I, other I, thing that yeah. we know is that flowing water through system and always having fresh water is one of the ways that we can be very effective and ensure that our students have safe, clean water to drink. So while we did change the protocol in accordance with the updated state guidance, um, one of the things that we now can, we have evidence that fresh water that we know in our system is clean, and you, you missed uh, Council Member uh, Ferreras Copeland did ask for what's the difference between our situation and municipalities that have been in the news as having real issues, and there are very clear differences in the underlying water system and how that water is treated that we know keeps New York City water safe. I would be interested in learning how much more it would cost to do another test. I had one last question regarding accessibility. The Board of Elections has $4 million in their budget for storing, installing, and removing accessible hardware, accessibility hardware from public schools throughout the city. The Board of Elections is open to installing the equipment permanently at the schools. Uh, will you accept and maintain this equipment for year-round accessibility at schools? So we work very closely with the Board of Elections. We are happy to, to work with them and discuss any proposals that they have. Thank you.